So <clears throat> the next speaker is Cyril Closet from uh, Birmingham, and uh, the title of the talk is Higher Form Symmetries and the A-Twist. Thank you. Thank you to the organizers uh, for this wonderful conference. Uh, yes, so I would like to speak about some work um, that appeared um, a few months ago, and also some work in progress. This is all with uh, the group in Birmingham, so Osamara Life, PhD students, Elias Ferrer, a postdoc in Birmingham, and also uh, some work in progress with Adam Case, also students of mine within the audience. Um, so this is about supersymmetry, I apologize. Uh, supersymmetry QFT, I think there's been a few talks, but... Uh, so why supersymmetry? Should I motivate that for this audience? You know, nature is not so kind as uh, being supersymmetric, apparently, but we still like it because it gives us an analytic handle on strongly global physics, right? So that's the excuse, at least. And uh, so, in particular, it often gives exact non-perturbative computations of, let's say, path integral or general observables in, in QFTs. The way it often goes is that you have a, you know, you complicated QFT path integral, it's a gate theory, and if it's supersymmetric, then very general argument tell you that it will, uh, the path integral will reduce to often ordinary integrals over various moduli spaces indexed by some topological numbers and stuff like that, like moduli space of instantons and stuff like that. Uh, to make this uh, relation and this computation precise, often we need to, first of all, in this talk at least, I will be in Euclidean signature, and then we um, need to have some bells and whistles to preserve supersymmetry in space time. Um, and to, well, essentially have infrared regulators here. So what we will do is replace space-time RD with, a, in my case, a compact manifold. In general, there are really two ways of computing supersymmetric partial function. One is keeping, uh, let's say, a flat space, but with a so-called omega deformation of Nekrasov. The other one, related but a different prescription, is really to, to look at uh, compact spaces, uh, for instance, uh, first done by to on the fourth sphere and many other people. Um, now, the nice thing about the, this second option is that really, unlike the omega background here, the UV physics is preserved, so my manifold is locally flat, and in a patch, it's just the UV, is, is, so it's really like an infrared cutoff and nothing else. Uh, so this is what I mean by supersymmetric partial function today, and I will consider theory with four supercharges, so minimal supersymmetry in 4D, but really I will focus in three, on 3D and equal to, so that's the same supersymmetry algebra I just see in three dimensions. And uh, those theories, uh, we will consider them with an R-symmetry, importantly. Uh, you want R-symmetry, there will be essentially like free theory in the UV, like asymptotically free or IR free, uh, UV free theories. Uh, but they flow to strong coupling and often they flow to inter inter interacting fixed point, which is part of the interest. Um, now, in a, un a priori unrelated development, of course, 10 years ago, there was uh, uh, some nice, this nice paper by the gentleman there. Um, and there's been quite a few talks, uh, even at this conference, on this about so-called generalized symmetry. So it's just this idea that, uh, for the last uh, decade at least, uh, and longer, if you talk to uh, you know people not in MTH, um, people have been revisiting what it means to have quantum field theories, uh, to have symmetries, sorry, in quantum field theories. Uh, the very notion of, of, of symmetry has been um, extended, in part because um, you want to think not only about uh, symmetries that act on local operators of your QFT, but also on extended operators, so like line surfaces, and so on. And the general paradigm is that uh, the, the operators that implement the symmetry will be a topological operator. In the Euclidean path integral formalism, you think of uh, an operator, a point, or a line, and then a, a manifold that uh, needs to link this, uh, this object, this manifold on which that is the topological operator, uh, that is uh, supported on that manifold, and the fact that it's topological is the fact that this is a really like a conserved symmetry. Um, and I will focus on symmetries which are discrete abelian groups in this, uh, indexed by discrete abelian groups, so-called invertible symmetries in this talk. Now, on a compact manifold, then uh, the insertion of this topological operator only depends on a particular homology class of the, of the sub-manifold. So, for instance, well, yeah, uh, in general, for a p-dimensional uh, extended object, the symmetry that will link this object will be, uh, I mean, the, the cycle will be uh, d minus p minus one dimensional. And by Poincare duality, you can think of it as turning on really some background gauge field, which will be a cohomology class, uh, p plus one cohomology class in, uh, valued in the, in the group. A very common example, and in fact, the one I will focus on as well in 3D, is the case of one-form symmetries. That's the one that we use to, uh, 
uh, to think about confinement, for instance, in 4D as well. So, and the, yeah, the most common one-form symmetries are the ones that arise as center uh, symmetries, meaning you might have a gauge group which has a non-trivial center, for instance, Zn for SUN. Uh, and then some part of this uh, center might be preserved by the matter, meaning that all the fields are actually neutral under the center. Um, and then in that case, the Wilson loops uh, that you can build in this gauge series will be charged under this one-form symmetry. Um, a related uh, construction, which will be important also in this talk, is the so-called Polakov loop, which is what you do when you wrap the Wilson line on a circle. So in the ordinary QFT, it will be finite temperature. In my case, it's like fake finite temperature in, with supersymmetry. Um, and in that case, if you the Wilson loop, it is charged under this one-form symmetry, but from the point of view of the R d minus 1 uh, physics, so transverse to the circle, of course, it's a local operator that is not, char no, not charged under an ordinary symmetry, the so-called center symmetry, which is a zero-form symmetry. And then the statement of color confinement, either in the case of Wilson loop or in finite temperature with Polyakov loops, is the, the statement that the, the d-dimensional one-form symmetry is preserved by the vacuum. Okay, so um, why I, I mentioned that is because it will be important for us that given a gauge group G and uh, a symmetry uh, gamma one, uh, one-form symmetry, which is a center symmetry, which is non-anomalous, uh, then we can construct a gauge group G prime, which will be G mod gamma prime. So you quotient by the center. For instance, you go from SU2 to SU2 mod Z2, which is SO3. So you will have the different gauge group with the same Lie algebra. Uh, and the choice of gauge group um, is often called a choice of global structure. It's been studied by, uh, uh, by many, many of us, uh, in starting really in, in this field uh, with this paper ten years ago, nine years ago. Um, 11 years ago, yeah, I can't count. 11 years ago. Right. Okay, so the, the symmetry operators being topological, they are supersymmetric. And that will be important for me. So that means that, of course, if I know to compute any supersymmetric pass integral, partition function, whatever, I, can, I should be able to just insert any topological operator and compute it as well. Uh, in particular, I should be able to gauge this, uh, for instance, uh, one-form symmetry or higher-form symmetries um, by just summing over the insertion of all these background gauge fields, equivalently the, the insertion of all the, the topological operators on any, one, on any cycles in your manifold. So in a supersymmetric theory, you should be able to do that completely explicitly. Uh, and perhaps surprisingly, that's not been done yet, so we are doing it. Um, there, there's been, of course, some work on that. I will mention some of it. So the, maybe the earliest work along those lines uh, why, was by uh, Shlomo and Brian Willett uh, 11 years ago, as I said. Um, but in the following, I will focus on the 3D equal to supersymmetric gauge theories. And uh, yeah, we'll discuss, if I have time, I mention something about 4D at the end. Okay, so there I need to introduce a little bit of formalism about how we compute things uh, before we start even introducing the topological operators. Um, what we will do is think about, first of all, first of all 2D gauge theories, or 2D uh, n equal to two supersymmetric field theories, again with this R symmetry. And then there is uh, some uh, trick that appeared in various talks, including Darius talk. Uh, which is a topological twist of Witten that allows you to preserve supersymmetry or half of the supersymmetries on any Riemann surface. Um, and then you can define the A model. Uh, that's some, something we often do in topological strings, for instance, which is a so-called cohomological TQFT. So it's a, it's a topological quantum field theory that is obtained by going to the cohomology of those supercharges, which are nilpotent and scalar on the, on the Riemann surface. So if for 3D and equal to theories, there is something very similar you can do. What we'll consider is a, a three manifold, which is circle fiber over a Riemann surface or a Riemann orbifold. In fact, I think I will just focus on sigma g times S1, so the product case. And uh, when there is such a vibration structure, you can essentially pull back the A twists on sigma to uh, uh, what we will call a 3D A twist on, on M3. So you preserve supersymmetry as well, half of the supersymmetry on these three manifolds. And then the supersymmetric partition function that we would, that we would compute as a pass integral over sigma g times S1, so a Riemann uh, surface of genus G times a circle, will be the same as taking the trace since it's a circle. As usual, it's a Witten index. Uh, so it's a trace so minus 1 to the f of the theory quantized on the Riemann surface. Now, this has been uh, yeah, computed by many people in the language of pass integral by Benin and Zaffaroni in particular. 
Now, what, the, the, what I'm going to do is compete it more like what's first done essentially by Nekrasov and, and Sotashvili, which is the, the atrius point of view. So it is that we will consider the 3D theory on a circle, and so you can always consider any 3D theory in a circle as a 2D theory. It's just that it has Kaluzaklan modes, right? It's just the, the Kaluzaklan philosophy that says more than 11 years ago, it's probably 100 years, 111 years ago, many years. So, so we have these 2D theories, it just has KK modes, and, um, but once we go into the A model, so again, doing the Q cohomology, it's, it's a relatively simple model. You can take, uh, you can in particular look at the, at the states there, so the Hilbert space, it's a TQFT with finite number of states on a circle, and uh, those will be the so-called beta vacua. There are a finite number of them. You can find them, or they, they are in one-to-one -one correspondence with solution of this simple beta equation, so in other words, some critical point of twisted superpotential. The only important trick here, due to Nekrasov-Sashvili, is that you don't just extremize superpotential d -d 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 -w -d -u equals zero, where u is some uh, Lie algebra uh, scalar for us, Lie algebra valued scalar, but instead, you, it's equal to an integer, so in, in other words, this equation. And that has to do with the fact that you, you're dealing with a gauge theory, and that's quite important for everything to make sense. But then, since I have a finite number of states, I'm on, on a Riemann surface, and I can compute everything by a very standard trick. So in particular, if I'm on a torus, uh, this is just the number of states, and that's it. I'm just doing a trace. If I'm on a Riemann G, G Riemann surface, I can insert an operator that is called the Handel Green operator, which uh, inserts or remove, if you like, uh, handles. So this is just using tools of TQFTs uh, in two dimensions. And so you just have this sum over the solution of these equations, some very explicit function there that actually only depends uh, on the twisted superpotential here uh, that we know for any gauge theory, and some extra uh, so-called uh, effective dilaton coupling, which we also know exactly for, for any gauge theory. Now, this uh, beta vacua formalism is uh, very efficient, very powerful for, for many things. Um, but it only works for the, when the 3D gauge theory is, the gauge group G is simply connected or, or actually unitary. What you need is that the, the fundamental group of G tilde uh, will be a free group, but it won't have a torsion part, a free abelian group. Uh, so, so um, for instance, of course, we could consider UN, SUN. We've seen that in some of the talks. But with the formula so far, I could not do like uh, PSUN, so SUN mod ZN, or it, so in, including the simplest case of SO3 gauge group instead of just SU2. So we want to extend the atrius formalism to this, uh, to this setup of a general gauge group. So to do that, then, we will obviously follow the two steps uh, following what I said so far. First, we really consider the theory with G equal G tilde, let's say, an SUN gauge theory, and we, then it has a one-form symmetry, say, and then we study all the operators in that, the one-form symmetry operator in this theory, uh, the expectation values, and so on, and then if we sum over all the insertion, that's the same as gauging, and we will get down to, uh, let's say, the PSUN theory here. I should mention that uh, this work that we did, it appeared, I mean, there was some uh, related work by uh, Eckhart, Kim, uh, Shafermanecki, and Willett, and some, uh, some work also in 2D gauging uh, related to what I'm, we are doing, really, pretty much isomorphic to some of the results here, uh, by Gukov, uh, Ray, Reed, and Schapner. And really, a lot of our, of our, of our work, we are adapted to uh, some, uh, some unpublished work by Brian Willett. I tried to convince him to be on the paper, but uh, he, he moved on from physics, sadly. Right, so... The, the one-form symmetry operators in, in a three dimension, they are themselves one-dimensional because it's a Wilson line is a, is, will be linked by a line as well in three dimension. And so, in particular, they could be charged under themselves. I mean, they, they could, uh, the, the topological operator could be themselves charged under themselves, so which would be the sign of having a, a, a Toft anomaly for this one-form symmetry. Now, the most important things, remind, uh, re, uh, remind, uh, remember what I said uh, a minute ago about uh, Wilson loops, about uh, Polakov loops, sorry. Um, from a 2D perspective, I could either wrap my uh, topological lines on a circle or leave, in, leave them all along sigma. And so from the 2D perspective, I have two distinct symmetries. I have a one-form symmetry that corresponds to wrapping the line, and then it's just a topological point operator on sigma. So that's a one-form symmetry. And uh, if my uh, topological line is still along sigma, then it's an ordinary zero-form symmetry, actually, in two dimensions. 
Okay, so the one form symmetry in 2D is necessarily preserved by, by the vacuum. And uh, so that means that uh, on any beta, vac vacu beta state here, it will just act by a phase, which should be a character of the, of the group. Um, and in fact, we can understand, uh, compute this, this, uh, this phase here explicitly, essentially think, uh, understanding that the insertion of this line along the, the S1 is really the same and is inserting some uh, sub G bundle on sigma, which does not uplift to a G tilde bundle, to the simply connected group bundle. Like, for instance, an SO3 bundle with a non -trivial, trivial with stiffer Whitney class. So really, this insertion there of pi is like inserting a stiffer Whitney class in the, on sigma. And uh, so this is inserting flux, in other words, for this G, G uh, symmetry on sigma. That is, uh, we, we have some uh, nice work for back in the days. Or to compute that in terms of so-called flux operator, and the point is, again, this is completely governed by the twisted superpotential of the theory. So, okay, we can, we can do that, and that's easy. The more, more inter uh, yeah, so an interesting uh, aspect of one-form symmetry in 2D is also that they satisfy decomposition, something studied by Ehrman and collaborators, in particular Eric Sharp over the years, um, which is the fact that if I have a one-form symmetry in two dimensions, it's actually a direct sum of theories. In particular, the Hilbert space uh, is a direct sum. Uh, and then if here, uh, as I said, uh, yeah, as I didn't say, gamma one is actually also always non-anomalous in two dimension. And then gauging it is pretty trivial. It will be projecting onto one of the universes of decomposition. In particular, gauging without background field. This is like a background field or a theta angle, if you want, for a dual minus one form symmetry. But uh, for instance, if you set theta equal, uh, curly theta equal one here, it just, uh, projecting into the, the first segment we have for the trivial character. So gauging is just projecting into universes, so that's very easy. Okay, so the zero form symmetry uh, gauging is a bit more interesting, but of course, since we are in the string theory conference, all of you hopefully have studied Polchinski, and so you know how to gauge a zero form symmetry. That is what is known back in the days as an orbifold. So in principle, I can skip three slides, and, but let me. <laughs> Let me still uh, remind ourselves a bit of that. Um, so, okay, so uh, the, the, um, the, what we first need to understand is how this uh, zero form symmetry in 2D acts on the beta vacua, on the beta states. And uh, here, in general, it will spont so the, the beta vacua will uh, spontaneously break the symmetry. In other words, it, the gamma zero will act as a permutation on the gamma vacua. That you can understand again from the 3D construction. But uh, let's say here, you just have to realize, uh, just for this equation to make sense, that uh, gamma here really index an element of the magnetic lattice of my um, gauge group G tilde over gamma, so of G. Um, and uh, this magnetic lattice is itself embedded into the, the Lie algebra, and those things are complexified, the Lie algebra valued. So at least this equation makes sense, and actually, this is actually a permutation between beta vacua. You can show that. Um, so in general, we would then, uh, in a given beta vacuum, we will be, uh, gamma zero will be broken to the stabilizer uh, of, uh, of gamma zero in this vacuum. So there will be orbit structure with each orbit might have a stabilizer. Um, and uh, the, the fact that we have a stabilizer is linked, as, as I said, in orbifold in string theory to having twisted sectors. So a twisted sector in, a, in this language of topological lines is the fact that instead of building a state here, so a, a beta vacuum, a beta state uh, on the cylinder and you evolve it, um, you could just cons construct a state there where you have uh, a topological alliance a long time. Right? So that's a twisted sector. And they exist precisely if uh, the beta vacua are uh, fixed by uh, the, the, the shift by delta, where delta is again a gamma zero element. So there are as many... Uh, so for each orbit under gamma zero, there are as many twisted sectors as the dimension of the stabilizer, which is uh, by the stabilizer orbit theorem, the dimension of the group divided by the dimension of the orbit. And so in, the, in, the, in general, gamma zero theory, so zero form symmetries, I mean, uh, discrete symmetries in, in 2D could have uh, tofta anomalies. But uh, in this case, it comes from this one form symmetry in 3D. And so it will be non-anomalous for us. And then we can just always gauge it independently. And uh, in particular, you will end up with uh, uh, a gauge Hilbert space, which is just indexed like this by orbits under gamma zero. 
entries that sectors indexed by S omega here. Okay, and then we can also do the gauging in terms of the pass integral, in terms of the, the explicit insertion of line if I want to. Uh, that is just, again, a pretty straightforward TQFT computation. Um, you just need to insert topological lines everywhere, and uh, yeah, so you need to understand how the insertion of, uh, of the line uh, gives you some uh, operation on the, on, the, yeah, on the TQFT. So either you do or you don't, but uh, thank you. Uh, but this is the kind of TQFT computation you would do in, in, uh, in 2D. Uh, an interesting aspect of this, uh, this one-form symmetries in 3D, as I already mentioned, is that they might have toft anomalies, um, and uh, so which would be essentially uh, B squared, so B is uh, two, uh, two form, uh, which is a discrete two form, a GABA value two form, which uh, for the one-form symmetry in 3D. So this is the, the so-called anomaly theory in 4D. And so if you dim reduce it along the circle, you get a, a mixed anomaly between now my two-dimensional zero form and one form symmetries. Right. Um, okay, so that means that the, topological the point topological operator and the line topological operator on the sigma don't commute in general. Instead, they, they form this kind of projective representation, which is the old mark of an anomaly. Uh, and one can show that this anomaly actually only, de only depends on the chance amount levels of the 3D gauge theory. Now, one interesting uh, implication of, uh, of this anomaly is that it constrains the orbit structure. Uh, for instance, we can show easily that uh, the a beta vacuum would be fixed by the full gamma if and only if the anomaly vanishes. And in general, if you have a larger anomaly, it means that the, the minimal size of the orbit will be larger. Okay, so then we can uh, use all, this, all that to compute the topological electricity index for a general gauge group, as I said, by gauging gamma here. Let's say gamma is gamma one itself, or maybe a subgroup, which is non anomalous. Uh, so we need to sum over all insertion of topological line and topological points on the, on the Riemann surface. Um, so we, we can do that uh, as, a, as a sketch. And at the end, you will just have a, what you expect in a, TQ, in a 2D TQFT, in the A model for this theory, a trace over this gauge Hilbert space, um, which is like gauging the gamma zero symmetry, but we both, now we both use the gamma zero and the gamma one. So I both use the gamma zero gauging and also project it over the universe uh, due to the, the fact of that there was also a, a one form symmetry in 2D. So, okay, very explicit formula there. So let me, uh, in the last couple of minutes, give some examples and numbers. I even uh, drew a plot last night because uh, I realized that a lot of you guys had plots and I was uh, feeling left out. Um, so let's consider a, a SUN, uh, an SUN theory uh, at level K, chance amount theory. In general, we could consider chance amount matter theories and so on, but just to test our ideas here, let's just consider a, a chance amount theories with supersymmetry. Of course, there, there are zillions of other methods, 3D TQFT methods to to, in principle, get all the results I got. Actually, they were not all gotten in the literature, so it seems like we have new results for that, but at least it's a test that the formalism that we have actually works. Um, so pure chance amount then, or supersymmetric chance amount is the same thing. I mean, pure chance amount, bosonic chance amount is just level k, which be shifted by k minus n, because you have like gauge nodes that you can integrate out between the two descriptions. And the superpotential is very simple. It's just k u squared, essentially. This is like the, the killing form. Uh, so this looks like a boring thing, like just a scalar, it's massive, that's it, there is one vacuum. No, but the, the problem is that uh, you have this like shift by integer, as I said, so in the vacuum. So there are a, a few more states, and uh, well, there are as many states in general as the, the integrable representation of SUN at level, at level K. Uh, but in other words, here you can compute also by other method the Witten index, as well done by Witten for chance amount theories. Um, it just uh, choose K minus N, N minus n minus one, k, k minus one, n minus one, sorry. So that's the number of beta vacua in this, in this theory. Um, you can compute the two-set index. Uh, it's given famously by the in the formula. So uh, for uh, the people who were, you know, doing string theory in the 80s, some of you, no offense, uh, probably done West Domino Witten models and stuff like that. So this is the number of conformal blocks uh, on, on sigma g for the West Domino Witten model at level k. Okay, so um, 
Now this SUNK symmetry, uh, chunks of material is as well ZN one form symmetry with the anomaly which is minus K mod N. Then we can gauge any non-anomalous subgroup that R, where R is a divisor of N. This, and then you would obtain this SUN mod ZR theory. This is just the condition for this to exist. Uh, and then by direct computation, we, we apply the formalism and you find this very compact formula, for instance, for the index, so T2 minus, uh, T2 times S1, so the T3, uh, with, uh, the ordinary with an index of this theory. It has a sort of number theoretic flavor. Here J3 is this uh, funny, uh, so J3 is a jordan totten function. Oh, yeah, I'm out of time. So anyway, it's a number theoretic number. You can, you can compute it and it's nice. Uh, I'll show you my plot here. Those are numbers, those are with an index. This is the plot. That's the log of the index. Oh, okay. So I'm out of time, but anyway, this is, uh, you can uh, check SU2 versus SU3 and so on more, more explicitly. Uh, there will be future direction that I will skip. Let me just mention maybe about 4D. You could do, of course, a similar game on C2 times S2. It's something that we're exploring uh, with Adam um, recently. In fact, there is a lot to say about the most, most general uh, four manifold that you can consider in, in, four, in four dimension as well. Uh, the new element in 4D is that instead of having just gamma zero and gamma one, I would have gamma one, gamma zero, gamma zero, gamma minus one uh, on the Riemann surface. So there is more to play. There are also more things that happen because of anomalies of the 4D theories and so on. So in other words, let me conclude here. There is, uh, that is my conclusion here. General asymmetry is intersected with Suzy localization as a non-zero intersection. So lots, lots to do, so if you want to help us, come join us. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Thanks, that was very nice. Um, so for this last point about the overlap, sometimes it might be interesting to think about um, disconnected uh, gauge groups. So when you did the extension of the A model to non-simply connected, is it also possible to extend to connected in some straightforward way? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think I did some work on that with Daniel Park when we were young. I don't remember the details now. We did that actually for uh, 2D theories with ON theories, with ON and so on. So yeah, the, certainly it can, uh, certainly in our to-do list because of course, as you know, for SO, I mean, for the O story, there is a huge zoo of non-invertible structure and so on. So yes, that's on the to-do list, absolutely. Exactly what I was thinking of. <laughs> Other questions, comments? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.